I hope you're all ready and set for our first panel discussion of the summit, where we're going to talk about the new media for marketeers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming our session chair for this session, Mr. Jayesh Ullati, Vice President and General Manager, India in Mobi. A very warm welcome to you, Jayesh. And I'd leave the screen over to you to introduce our panelists and also take the session forward. Thank you, Khyati. Thanks for the warm welcome. Uh, welcome to the discussion on gaming, the new media for marketeers. Uh, my name is Jay Shulatil. I lead the India business for Inmobi. I have had the opportunity and uh, probably I've been associated with gaming uh, since the days of Engage uh, when I was with Nokia. Uh, gaming has probably evolved quite a lot from that time. And uh, it's, it's actually become much more exciting uh, a space right now. Uh, it certainly has moved in terms of the size because earlier it was used to be a niche niche uh, area, niche segment, but now it's gone across. You've seen the two uh, reports from uh, Mr. Menon and uh, Rajesh and uh, the kind of audience that we have is huge. So uh, I won't take much time. Let's just uh, go into this panel discussion. We have a wonderful set of panelists out here uh, who have great experience across the board on gaming in multiple formats. And uh, let me welcome the panelists. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Ritu, uh, Ritu is the head of marketing. Uh, she's the director for marketing for Dell Technologies. And with Dell Alienware and Inspiron brands, which are custom designed for serious gamers, I'm sure she has a lot to add to this particular discussion. Would leave it to Ritu to actually briefly talk about what she does. Hey, Jesh, hi. So great to be here. Um, like I said, very, very look much looking forward to this interesting discussion today. Uh, gaming is a very important part of our overall portfolio, of our PC notebook portfolio, not just across the world, but for India as well. And with Alienware and G-Series, uh, it's a kind of segment that we go after. So uh, looking forward to the discussion today. Thanks for having me here. Thanks, Ritu. We also have Mr. Nilesh Gohil, Chief Business Officer, Mankal Sokrati, with more than two decades of experience in analytics, digital and mobile. Over to you, Nilesh, for sharing some of your or some some to uh, sentence about your work. Hey, hey guys, thanks for having me. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Um, I am part of Makal Sukrati, which is a, a team of all 1,000 customer experience specialists, and I lead a team of over uh, 500 uh, experts in digital transformation and customer activation predominantly working in India market, right? And have had a chance to contribute to a number of unicorns and a growth minded companies in India. Um, and I had a good fortune to work with a few of the gaming players as well, uh, likes of Opro and Bazi and and Games24 and, and, and so on. So, so it'll be an exciting and interesting learning for, for me and others, I guess. Wonderful to have you on the panel, Nilesh. Uh, <clears throat> so, I think uh, we have another interesting panelist from the world of gaming, Rashmi Ranjan Mishra, who heads Nazara's free to, game, uh, free to play gaming division. Rashmi, you might, you might want to add a few words on what you exactly do. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me here. Thanks, guys. So, uh, myself, Rashmi Ranjan Mishra, I lead the free to play business division of uh, Nazara Games. And uh, it's been a, a long time we have been. Uh, you know, in the gaming space, trying a lot of things, doing a lot of exciting stuff that I will definitely share with you guys my insights, my, you know, uh, thoughts on this gaming ecosystem. Uh, well, we, I personally have been uh, heading the business so revenue for Nazara Games. So it's been a very exciting journey for me where we have been evangelizing brands and, uh, uh, you know, uh, day to day and day out for the how brands and agencies uh, can leverage gaming as a space and uh, help helping them achieving their marketing goal. Great, Rashmi. Thanks for being here. Um, adding more marketing muscle to this panel is Mr. Vineet Sharma, VP Marketing and uh, New Business Development South Asia for ABN Bev. Vineet, love to hear from you more about your work. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me here, Jayesh. Uh, uh, and uh, my name is Vineet and I lead uh, marketing and new business development uh, for AB InBev here in India. Uh, gaming for us is a relatively uh, newer space, uh, but we have taken some interesting, uh, you know, steps with our brands and some, some of the campaigns that we have done uh, have had gaming at the heart of it. 
uh, and we have learned a lot. Uh, and and you know the, the results have been very very impressive, if I may say. Uh, and today I'm very excited to share some of those experiences with each one of you, uh, and learn as well, because there's a lot of things that uh, each one of you are doing, and you know, and and there's something that we can be inspired uh, as well uh, here in here in Ibn Bev. Great, great, Vinit. Thanks for being here. And last but not least, we have Ashwin Patnaban from Group M. He has the mandate from Group M to uh, uh, in investing in co and co-creating uh, with media, data, tech, and other products uh, to enhance the value for their their clients. Welcome, uh, Ashwin. Welcome to the panel. Thanks, Jayesh. Thanks, Jayesh. Uh, I'm actually very, quite excited because uh, as we speak, uh, we at Group M are incubating a new esports business. And uh, it's on the back of a very successful sports consulting business, which which is which actually works across multiple clients. But esports is clearly an area that we're seeing our clients being very interested to know more about and to see how they can actually engage with this uh, community as well as uh, uh, you know uh, brands which are involved in this uh, space. So for us, an important I would say an inflection point because we're seeing consumers flocking in big way and which means brands are clearly interested. So a lot of questions for us to ask and answer right now. Great, Ashwin. Thanks for being here once again. So welcome all. Uh, it's, it's, it's great to be part of this wonderful panel. And uh, <clears throat> we have already set the context. We have had two reports coming out, one uh, from Mr. Menon and from Rajesh. And it's quite enlightening to see the kind of changes that have happened in the last, uh, last few years, and especially during the pandemic. We have seen some great uh, changes in terms of the adoption of gaming within India as well as globally. Uh, talk, people talking about the kind of adoption in terms of the number of people who have started gaming uh, on, on mobile gaming, uh, the kind of percentage of women in, involved in gaming, so on and so forth. So interesting statistics and look forward to this discussion. So to start off with, uh, I, I'll put this question to, across to everybody. We'll pass on the question. The first thing that uh, I just would like to understand uh, when you think of gaming, uh, or think of mobile gaming, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Can I start with maybe, uh, <clears throat> Ritu, would you want, want to talk about what's your, what's your take on that? Specifically, when you say mobile gaming, I think what comes to my mind is scale. Right. Um, very clearly, scale. Where I think that's that's been a good, big enabler, particularly, and we've seen that in the report that was being shared in the previous session, that a lot of scale happened, particularly during the pandemic, because a lot of uh, people were actually looking for online entertainment, you know, so, and, and those options were there. And I think mobile uh, enabled and allowed that to happen. So definitely scale. Otherwise, I, when it comes to gaming, I, I think of uh, plenty of opportunities and I think of engagement. Thanks, uh, thanks Ritu. Uh, uh, let's just move on to Ashwin. Maybe you can uh, share some insights on what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of gaming. Actually, lesser insight, more an experience, I would say, Jaish. <laughs> because uh, for me, being also one of those casual gamers, adding up the numbers that Ritu spoke about, right? Uh, for me, those reward ads that come are top of my mind because they allow me to play more. They allow me to go and uh, do more things in the game. But that's also a sign of the fact that uh, engagement levels are very high. And from a branding perspective, uh, surely... This is something which, as marketers, we're all very interested to know how to leverage better. Great. Thanks. Uh, Nilesh, uh, would you want to share your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, my sentiments are uh, similar to what Ritu mentioned. Right? It's a massive business opportunity, especially as we work on the other side of the table, right? enabling advertisers to tap onto this. Um, I believe uh, it's something that um, is, is relatively untapped. Um, and I, I mean, personally, like Ashwin said, I have been also an avid game player and, and fondly remember those stimulating experiences, especially in my younger age. Uh, uh, and I, I think, uh, yeah, the, the video games have come a long way. Right? No, don't say that you're not playing any games now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I do, but much, much less than I, I used to. Uh, and and as like the second half of the humanity comes on board uh, uh, in the internet, right? I think more and more social media, uh, the videos and, and the gamings are taking the center stage of the uh, the new kind of phenomena of entertainment. And I, I think gaming has a, a much bigger role to play as, as, as it evolves. Great. Thanks, Alish. 
Uh, moving on, so let's hear from uh, Rashmi, uh, since he's coming from the world of gaming. Uh, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, so, Jayesh, I've been uh, hearing to our extreme panelist. Uh, earlier, we were having, I was listening to sessions from Sai, Rajesh, Giris, and all that. So, I've been hearing and uh, listening to them, and we all, all know that what kind of scale, uh, gender, uh, female, male, uh, kind of participation engagement is, is happening in gaming ecosystem that we all 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 hearing for a quite some time now. But to my to my mind, so what I I will say two things. So far as the gaming uh, comes to my mind, that is high on entertainment, that is high on engagement. These are the two factors I would emphasize upon. And the third interesting thing, uh, Jayesh, I would like to highlight here. So uh, I, I was hearing to one of my friend's kid, 10 years old boy, he was telling me, I was surprised to hear. So he has started thinking how gaming can be a career option for, for them. True. So he, when I asked them, what do you want to become? He told me, uncle, I want to, bec I want to become a gamer. So that's a very surprising and I, I got, uh, you know, uh, surprised to hear that. So I can say uh, that's a career option for millennials. So that's, that's uh, very interesting. You know, that thing that, that's happening. Absolutely, Rashmi. I have one 14 year old at my home who also seems to be taking up a career. Of yeah. At least I'm trying to see what can happen out of it. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, Vineet, uh, we are left to hear from you in terms of what is the first thing that comes to your mind uh, when we think gaming. Yeah, some interesting uh, perspectives already coming in the groups, uh, Jayesh. But for me, uh, I think gaming, uh, two things come up. Uh, one is new ways to reach customers. Uh, and brands today are, are using gaming as a you know very very active marketing tool. I think it's coming up uh, very very sharp, and they are just going beyond the simple ad placements to create actually their own games to build a lot of engagement. Uh, and obviously, the time on gaming has increased, uh, and brands who are actually following where the consumers are going uh, will actually spend a lot of uh, time and energy in thinking what do we do in gaming and how do we. Uh, becoming part of the experience. So that was first, and the second one uh, is a huge economy of, of gaming industry, right? Uh, you know, today I think it's value valued around 150 billion plus industry. Uh, but if I look at uh, from a brand side, uh, you know, and then and the cost of playing a video game is no longer actually limited to just purchase of a base game. There's so many, uh, you know, uh, revenue driving uh, mechanisms, and that's where our brands come into play. Uh, you know, I'm very, very inspired by what Louis Vuitton actually did uh, with the, the League of Legends, where they're actually creating collections, uh, you know, in real life, as well as online skins. Uh, so it's a good example for brands to follow. And obviously, there are a lot of brands uh, who are already in the brand wagon. Uh, so yeah, two things. One is uh, new ways to reach customers, uh, as well as at the same time, a huge amount of growing economy and the growing industry uh, gaming is becoming in times to come. Great. Thanks, Vineet. Uh, in fact, uh, that was uh, leading on to my next question, which you have partially answered, uh, which is basically, as a brand uh, advertiser marketeer, what's your per perception of gaming and what uh, and uh, what is the what is your perception of gaming as a medium is something which I wanted to ask. You have already come up with some of the answers. Let's also hear from Ritu, because she also comes from the background. How does she look at it as a brand marketeer advertiser? Uh, 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 how do you look at gaming as a medium, advertising medium? No, absolutely, Jayesh. So I think, like I said, um, you know, for, for us, uh, gaming is the right context, is the right platform, is the right environment to reach out to the audience that one wants to engage with. Um, if I look at a scenario, which was probably pre-COVID and some, some time back when the perception about gaming was that, you know, it's a very, it's a very niche kind of an audience that you're reaching out to only a hardcore gamer or maybe a certain profile of people that you're reaching out to. And once th that's the only kind of if you had that as part of your TG audience to find, then you would use gaming as a platform for you to engage. But that mechanics has changed completely, as we've seen that even in the report, because the demographics has, has widened significantly. It's no longer a young man's uh, space, you know, a niche urban young man space. There are no limitations in terms of demographics. It's white, it's white based. There are no limitations in terms of uh, gender, in terms of age. So with the kind of games that are mobile, particularly on mobile gaming, which are now getting introduced, it, it suddenly the audience profile has opened up to you. And if as a brand, we are wanting to reach out to that set of audience, which is anybody's audience for that matter, 
if you're reaching out to that set of audience, then that's a good opportunity to do that from an engagement standpoint. And also, you know, very honestly, from our perspective, it's also about engaging with them and giving them the right platform and, and, and giving them the right experience and the right nudge, because eventually they may want to upgrade from a, you know, from a, from a five inch screen to a 15 inch screen, you know, from a mobile to a PC, because as they go evolve in their entire gaming journey, they may want to get into more, uh, you know, a different kind of a gaming experience altogether. So from a, uh, you know, from a brand perspective, yes, there are lots of opportunities available and we have done that ourselves, both globally across, across the world, as well as in India, some good partnerships uh, that we've had. Um, I think what's important is if it's done in the right manner, yes, you know, as Muneet said, there are, you know, display ads which are possible and, and that's one very obvious platform that exists. But what is, what is amazing now is that the uh, possibilities in terms of what all you can do as part of that gaming, you know, space, whether it's as part of content, whether you build it in as part of your whole space, whether it's part of the franchise that you spoke of, how can you as a brand engage, you know, kind of, uh, get yourself into that space and engage in a very relevant manner in a contextual sense. That is what drives the quality of engagement that you want to drive with that audience. So I think that's that's something which is available and, and it's an opportunity which is uh, being tapped, but I'm sure there's a lot more that is left to be tapped. Great. That, thanks, Ritu. That, 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 uh, okay, what I hear is two things. One is catch them small, make them big. Uh, that's one. And the second one is the kind of engagement that you can bring in through gaming, uh, being part of the content or being uh, more immersive in the content and being part of the gameplay. That's something which you're talking about. That's great. Uh, <clears throat> so from the same perspective, audience and uh, uh, in terms of the kind of uh, uh, width of, uh, you know, uh, reach that you're able to get, I would like to hear from maybe uh, Nilesh, you could talk about what, uh, how do you perceive uh, gaming as an advertising medium? Because you would have worked across brands, you would have had the experience of uh, using that particular medium. Uh, I would like to hear from you. Uh, it would be great for the audience to hear from you. What is that perspective as a medium? Absolutely, Jay. So I, I think uh, from a, a, like reaching out to new audience, like uh, Ritu mentioned uh, and Vineet mentioned it, I, I think that that's the primary mechanism that brands have been using. Um, the Googles and the Facebooks of the world remain the primary uh, uh, kind of a mediums uh, otherwise, right, uh, uh, in the marketing budget. So uh, the brand who wants to scale very, very fast, uh, right, uh, the, the gaming and the programmatic way through which uh, to reach out to these users is the primary mechanism um, uh, for, for uh, incremental audience and the in, kind of augmenting the cost of equation uh, for that incremental audience. Um, I, I would say the gaming is uh, another interesting element, which is uh, uh, like rewarded ads, right? Which, which creates highly positive brand association as well. Uh, so while it has uh, other normal ones like banner and, and video and so on, but I think the rewarded ads is is uh, predominantly used by um, uh, by by kind of uh, performance oriented marketers and um, another area that we have been kind of um, uh, doing a innovative work is on our dynamic ads uh, so making sure that uh, each of the ads are dynamic and, and playable in nature as much as possible uh, to ensure that the advertisement outcomes are achieved all right so what I, I'm hearing from you is gamification of ads on one side, which creates more engagement. Second one is rewarded ads because their completion rates and uh, you know engagement is also higher. Great, yes, great, great, great. Thanks, Nilesh. Uh, that's great. And, uh, <clears throat> the next question I would specifically want to uh, be addressed by uh, Rashmi because he comes from that world and he would have a lot of insights considering he actually heads that part. Uh, Rashmi, the question is beyond normal, regular advertising, which is your uh, normal banners and rewarded uh, videos. What are the different things that you can do as an advertiser? What can advertisers do apart from this uh, regular things to get uh, get more traction? Or what are, what are the opportunities for advertisers on gaming beyond regular ads? Could you throw some light for the panel, uh, for the entire group as well as the audience? Am I, am I audible? Yes, so sorry, I was on mute. 
Okay. So, so absolutely, Jai. So, uh, this question I, I, I mean, asked every meeting that we attend or every pitch we we make to brand or agency that what else you can do uh, in gaming for us beyond just uh, video uh, display, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, the question is always that how you can create, bring on that immersive, seamless experience to the consumers through your gaming platform. So, that is the basic question that. Uh, every day we, we have to answer and we have to justify that how gaming can add value over and above just reach, scale or the you know uh, ROI kind of or the visibility kind of scenario. So, so I'll, be, I'll be happy to share a lot of things uh, that, that we've seen in the market, a lot of case studies, a lot of campaigns we've seen in the market, uh, be it uh, the recent Red Bull campaign which is done on the biggest uh, cricket franchisee, WCC, the campaign where you know a lot of lakhs of lakhs of users, lakhs of participants, they participated in uh, the uh, qualifier round, the pre second, the pre uh, final round, the final round, and this is being watched live stream on different twenty uh, YouTube channels and being watched by ten million fans. They're getting huge reward money at the end of the day in the finale. And uh, in the in the game itself, you have a lot of scopes, a lot of touch points where you seamlessly uh, integrate the brand, creatively integrate the brand, and you host content in their name. You change, you customize the the game mechanics, game control in the name of the brand. You uh, place the brand, I mean, inside the game more uh, creative manner, more uh, without hampering the uh, you can see the user experience, and you do a visibility, engagement, and interactivity. And finally, you deliver the uh, viewability from the brand and the gratification, gratify the users to build kind of, uh, you know, top of the mind uh, engagement, interaction among the target audience. So the ultimately, what I'm trying to say is that the brand has a very clear objective. They want to reach out to the maximum of their TZ through gaming vehicle. So that the, the, the agenda is very clear. The target is very clear. And Two, three more campaigns, uh, examples I'll be happy to share, like the campaign uh, of Detol we have seen, where in the game, Chota Bhim game, targeted to uh, kids and their family, where in the game you, you, you highlight the message, you deliver the message that, hey, did you wash your hand, sanitize your hand before you eat something? So that is something, that kind of uh, in, engagement, interaction you create inside the game, where you, you uh, deliver the message, you educate the target audience that, hey, have you used the product, the product before you do something? So that that's so the point I'm trying to make is that beyond just scale uh, delivering uh, video or display inventory at scale, or you deliver programmatic inventories by brands to deliver uh, campaigns programmatically, you have a lot of other things that which can impact a brand, which can help the brands to grow. And create a visibility amongst their audience. There are lots, lot of examples we all have seen. We've seen that Mountain Dew, uh, Dew Arena campaign, which has been a successful franchise for last. So uh, a swing can can add to that. So a lot of uh, we've seen the participation, the visibility uh, last few years has been going on. That that franchise has been going on successfully. So the point I'm trying to bring on to this table uh, is that brand can't should not look gaming as just a simple or logo integration or a video integration, rewarded video or whatever it may be. But on the top of that, they can create a lot of interaction. They can create engagement and can they can deliver the message in a most creative and a best possible manner through gaming. Interesting. Interesting, Rashmi. Thanks. Thanks for those insights. Uh, um, I think what you are referring to is the fact that there is a lot of uh, digital digital uh, touch points that are happening now, which is a meeting point between the virtual and the real worlds. Uh, if I were to take the example of the uh, recent, um, in the, what happened with the Marshmallow concert, which happened within within the game of Fortnite. So such events, such digital campfires create a lot of traction and create a lot of engagement. Those are things which brands can leverage apart from just normal advertising. Uh, yeah. I would like to hear about that because uh, I think uh, you do a lot of work around uh, esports. I'm referring to Ashwin. You do a lot of work around esports, 
And uh, I would like to hear your thoughts, Ashwin, on those kind of specific events that can happen in game and can be, you know, a touch point between virtual and uh, real, the real worlds. Uh, what do you have to say about that? <clears throat> no, absolutely. I think uh, there are multiple spaces uh, around which a brand can get associated. And one of those spaces is the social, social space within a game. So if you take the Fortnite example, uh, Fortnite created this social space where you could your avatar could actually participate in this concert. In fact, I remember you spoke about the Marshmallow concert, but I think in April 20, they did a Travis Scott concert inside the game. And that had about 27 million people watching the concert. Uh, and they had uh, close to about 83 million streams that were uh, that the concert was uh, watched by. So uh, they've done multiple events like that. They've also, in fact, the movie Tenet, Christopher Nolan's Tenet, the premiere of the trailer actually happened inside Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in fact, Christopher Nolan has announced that he's going to release a movie inside Fortnite. So clearly, people are figuring out ways in which they, their audiences that are you know, uh, in the social space of a game, how can we leverage them? How can we create content which engages with them? And how can we create events which engage with them? And those are actually extremely exciting opportunities beyond what we have seen as obviously advertising. Uh, these are engagement opportunities. These are huge brand building opportunities and does require a significant amount of programming. But I guess the sheer scale and branding that is feasible and possible, uh, it's actually mouth watering. Great, great. I, I completely agree with you. And that's an area which uh, India probably has a lot to do and uh, we, we, we can as uh, uh, there is that opportunity to be you know, grabbed, uh, grabbed with. There is a lot of opportunity there. Um, <clears throat> my next question, uh, I'll probably direct it to uh, uh, Ritu and uh, Vineet because uh, they come from the brand marketing background. Since both of you would have had a lot of experience in uh, you know, leveraging gaming advertising or at least you have been thinking about it somewhere or the other. Uh, what where your objectives, if you have tried it out, what were your objectives and what are the kind of demand, uh, sorry, what are the kind of impact that you have experienced uh, using this uh, particular medium? Uh, maybe, uh, Vineet, would you want to start off with uh, what your experience has been? <clears throat> have you yeah, uh, this, have you been using it more uh, content or it has been inventory bias? How have you been looking at uh, gaming inventory? Yeah, no, absolutely. We 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 have actually uh, branched out out from just ad uh, placement, so not just only media buys. In fact, uh, we are looking at much more curated experiences uh, for our audience. Uh, something that uh, you know the earlier panelist Rashmi actually was talking about it as well. Uh, in fact, during New Year's time, uh, we launched a game uh, under our flagship brand, Budweiser, uh, called Conquer 2020, uh, that offered individuals an opportunity to kickstart 2021 on a new note. Uh, and this was a native, completely native uh, route. We created a game from scratch uh, in partnerships with uh, Underdogs Gaming Studio, uh, Aqua, Dominatrix, Animal, some of the agencies that we worked to create this game. Uh, and this was a, it was a very friendly refresh uh, on how collectively all of us overcame a lot of challenges in the year of 2020. Uh, and the game was divided across a lot of levels, people challenging each other. Uh, and, and we engaged a lot of uh, gaming enthusiasts uh, via contests, rewards, and merchandise on our social media platforms. Uh, not only that, we partnered with a lot of renowned gaming influencers, uh, communities on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube as well uh, to do that. And the results were pretty, pretty amazing uh, in, a, in a very short time. Uh, and a lot of fans, not only from a you know media impressions perspective, but we got a lot of user-generated content coming out of the of the, the whole thing. Right, people actually making videos and telling you know that you know. Uh, can you beat me on this score? Can you beat me on that score? So it was very, very good. Uh, and people uh, talking about it. And people were actually advocating on their social media platforms, telling us that, hey, you know, I've, I've clocked this score. Can you beat this, right? Uh, and we were giving pretty, pretty, pretty good rewards to a lot of, lot of these people. Uh, and, and, and this actually from a brand side, after doing this, the, um, you know, we became the most talked about brand in our category uh, in, in December. Uh, we, we got around uh, 1.5 lakh people playing out this game in, in a span of uh, 7 to 10 days. Uh, we delivered around 100 million impressions. Uh, not only that, we, we actually were trending on Twitter for top 5 uh, for, 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 for you know, some hours as well. So we really uh, you know, we, we leveraged this because in-game advertising 
uh, and in our placements uh, we do, but not at a big scale. As I said earlier as well, we are trying to uh, understand this world of gaming. Uh, but whatever we believe, I think our brands need to not just be a logo up there; they need to much play a much better role uh, in 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 the narrative of the games. And that was the intent. We wanted to you know engage with our guys, engage with our audience. Uh, you know, who, who who are a you know fanatic fan base of playing games, uh, and we and the results are speaking. And it was a very very uh, you know positive start. And I'm pretty sure a lot of our campaigns, a lot of our brands will now catch up to this bad bargain of gaming in particular. Great, Vinay. That that's that's a great story, and I'm sure that that's something which should get more audience so that more people try out these things. Uh, Ritu, maybe you also have some experience like that where you have specifically had some objective and probably meant to. Uh, oh, absolutely jay so to answer your question have we you know what's the kind how have we been using it so i would say it's been a combination so we've experimented with both um you know regular display ads as well as trying to do something which is more immersive which is more engaging mm -hmm. and and that i think is the beauty because the platform allows you to do that uh, if you're able to place yourself in a in a in a relevant and an in or you know in intrusive manner which is very integrated to the way the game is being played. And I'm going to pick up one example that we ran through. So our, uh, you know, given the category that we deal with, and it's a high price category, particularly when you're talking about gaming PCs, uh, uh, and there is innovation and technology that goes behind these products. And obviously the objective as a, you know, as a, as a brand marketer in that space is to, is to highlight those uh, aspects or those features of innovation that, the, that a gamer would be able to appreciate in a manner because the whole objective is, like I said, to help them upgrade from a five inch screen to a 14 inch screen, right? Uh, so G series actually has our, our, our Inspiron range of gaming products. G series something has a game, game shift key. What that does is at whenever it's required at, at the touch of a key, it allows you to boost your processor power for you to get that advantage that you, that you need at that particular point of time. And we had this, uh, we had this uh, thing going with GameLoft, where what we did is GameLoft again has a has a um, you know has a nitro booster where the car can get that added speed, you know when you when you need it at a particular point of time, it has an advantage of that speed that that the car can get. So it was a very beautiful interplay that came in together, and we identified those moments and opportunities within those various layers and stages of the game where these two things could go hand in hand. So it could be at the start of the game when the race is just about beginning, or it was also at a point of time when they had uh, you know, access to um, uh, more game money or game tokens, because it was at the end of it all, all about gamification. And we know that uh, you know, gamers really don't mind those, th those interventions because it gives them the opportunity. And I think somebody said that it, it, they, like the, they like the part that it gives them the, either the free plays or it gives them the you know, the gaming money or the points uh, they're in. So it, it kind of is linked back to it. Uh, so we identified those layers within the game to see how and the relevant places where it could go because that's where there are, it's a very seamless integration that was possible. And I would say this entire thing really paid off very well for us because the kind of engagement rate that we saw in that as part of that particular kind of integration was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And and I think as a, uh, as a marketer, I would want to be very conscious of the way that we are doing these things because it should not be something which is just there for eyeballs. Nothing wrong with that strategy per se, depending upon what your brand's objective is. But for us, it was not just about eyeballs, but it was actually about bringing alive an innovative concept and an innovation feature, which in this case was the game shift key and how that very beautifully tied back to a particular concept of the game itself. So that's, that's one of the ways that we have done this. Uh, the other thing that I would say is we've actually taken gaming a little differently. And as Rashmi, you know, spoke about a 10 year old talking about saying, I want to be a gamer. And you spoke about your son. I have a six year old nephew. He wants to build games. He doesn't want, he's, he plays games, but he wants to build games. So we have this, you know, and we know that with the youth in this country, that there, there, there is this desire to kind of go into that. Uh, we have this program. It's a, you know, it's an online and offline kind of a social engagement program called The Futurist. And we know that gaming as an industry has a lot of pull that people have. At the same time, there's a fair amount of enigma that exists around it because uh, the most obvious choice, of course, is I want to go and be a gamer, a professional gamer. All right, that's fine. What after that? And what are the other opportunities that exist in this industry surrounding that in that entire ecosystem? 
So we actually have, uh, we've been partnering with, uh, you know, Ankit Pant, who's, who's a professional esports player uh, and, uh, there. So we've partnered with him and we've had these mentorship sessions and programs with, for the youth particularly, talking to them and about all the opportunities that exist in the gaming ecosystem for them to grow and develop as a profession, if that is really what their passion is right now and they would want to convert that to their profession later on, what are the other avenues that exist beyond just being a professional gamer? What are the other, it could be a shoutcaster, you could be a game developer, you could be anything. So there's this whole experience that was, you know, a kind of like a program that was run for them. So it's, it's the idea is to tell you that these are these two very different opportunities that the industry offers uh, from a gaming perspective, depending upon what your brand's objective is. I think the opportunities, like I said, it's opportunities. It's, it's there for us to leverage and see. Absolutely. Thanks, Ritu. That's, uh, that's quite insightful, especially the part where you're trying to do something which is more re relevant for the community as well uh, from the uh, development perspective. Uh, <clears throat> moving on. So let me just uh, take this. Uh, we have a paucity of time here, so we, I'll need to be a little quick with some of the other questions that I have, uh, which I want to put across to the panelists. One, the next thing which I wanted to talk about was uh, or wanted to understand the views of the particular Going to be Z Sorry. Uh, I think there was a crosstalk. So essentially, uh, one of the key things in advertising is obviously audience. So getting the right audience, getting the right kind of uh, segments that you want to target your uh, advertising to. And uh, gaming as such as a, as a medium also provides this opportunity, uh, probably rightfully so because of the kind of, uh, uh, in, uh, the kind of game, the kind of uh, uh, games, the genre of games all matter and all also talk about the kind of people who are playing it. Essentially, uh, how do we how have we been able to utilize that segment how have we been able to uh, take audiences into it this question i would like to pose, pose it to uh, pose it to uh, uh, nilesh because you might have cut across multiple segments and categories uh, when you have uh, you know planned out planned out some of your campaigns how, how do you take that how do you look at uh, the different segments and audiences right Jay. so i think uh, being a performance marketer right our experience is complementing what I think Ritu and Vineet and Ashwin say, it, right? It's a, uh, it's more closing and making that final purchase from the awareness that is built through the, uh, the kind of uh, type of advertisement or engagement through ads that were done um, earlier, right? Through those innovative mediums. Now here, I think uh, there are, uh, like we discussed, I mean, uh, money follows the eyeballs and, and gaming is in a way perfect combination of a right audience at the right time and now we need to hit with a in a way right messaging and a communication and ad format like i earlier mentioned i think the ad format especially the rewarded videos and dynamic ads are the crucial ones that i think we have experimented with and now we have a zero static ad policy right so that, that's that's uh, how we are going about conveying to the the audience now on the audience side right especially for food tech for example swiggy um, or uh, for uh, uh, entertainment like boot and and uh, gaming companies like bazi right uh, the 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 gaming targeting and and closing like installs and and, and engagement uh, right the purchases and so on have worked phenomenally well uh, so for example swiggy i think we have seen a almost a third incremental audience with a, about a fifth better cost, right? Bazi, we saw like three X jumps in the, the customer engagement and the CTR. So, so the, the gaming inventory, right, is something that now forms about, about uh, two fifths of our uh, programmatic buys uh, uh, that Sopratika. So that, that's a very, very big, right, as a, as a evolved um, uh, marketeers, right? That we represent. Um, it, it's an important one, uh, and and we have uh, uh, Densu Marketing Cloud that is built uh, to form uh, a layer on top of this audience, right? Mm -hmm. To get better insights and 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 then be able to do better targeting, as as obviously we do a multi-touch point uh, uh, marketing, right? For our advertisers. Right, right, Nilesh. I I think that makes a lot of sense when you. Uh, when you're telling me that you have the audience layer uh, on top of it and it's quite insightful when you're saying that almost two-fifths uh, or uh, almost uh, close to about 20 percentage of your entire uh, you know 40 percentage yeah two-fifths uh, yeah 40 percentage is, is on gaming that's that's quite uh, that's eye-opening actually uh, 
Yeah, this is uh, uh, we've been all talking about the positives about gaming. I just wanted to understand from the panel, are there any concerns when you actually, as advertisers, can, can you tell me one or two concerns uh, that come up in your mind when you look at gaming as a medium? Uh, maybe you can, uh, Nilesh, you can no, start. Uh, with maybe that. I'll go okay, because, this, because, <laughs> because <laughs> it's really top of mind right now. Because, see, uh, a lot of the games obviously have content which could be uh, by nature violent could they could be blood they could be uh, gore all of that right and in fact a lot of the games esport games if i look at for example csgo these are all you know extremely aggressive games right absolutely uh, and that's clearly a challenge for a lot of brands mm -hmm. uh, do i want to be seen in an environment like that do i want to be seen uh, uh, so from a brand perspective, the second is obviously what's the messaging that I as a brand, responsible brand, and what is the message I'm giving to the society? I think that's the second question that comes in the mind of the brands. Do I want young impressionable kids or even adults like us to uh, in a way be addicted to some of these things? These are questions that are coming. So how do you, uh, how do you leverage the audiences that are coming with the, uh, with the whole gaming experience? And at the same time, how do you stay away from content which could be uh, not the right kind of content to associate with? I think that's going to be a challenge. Because unfortunately, a lot of the content which does get the eyeballs may not be, you know, typically brand safe. Got it. Got it. So brand safety is one of the concerns. Uh, maybe, uh, 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 I think maybe Vineet could uh, share something because you have two sides to look at it. One is yeah. from a brand regulatory perspective, and Absolutely. also from Absolutely. So yeah, you can you can share what no, you one have. one one. In fact, something we faced as well, considering we launched, as I said earlier, it launched our own game as well. I think one of the thing is uh, you know is gaming piracy in particular, uh, and a lot of lot of uh, these channels used by uh, the producers of the games uh, for interacting with players in particular can be hacked as well. Uh, and a lot of third parties can can do that hacking. Uh, so you need to be mindful of a lot of data leaks uh, and privacy information of a lot of our consumers, uh, you know, into if not done rightly, uh, can also have a lot of concerns. Uh, you know, we also, as I said, face something, but we obviously it was a very, very small uh, part. Uh, but, you know, these are the concerns, one of the big concerns that you should be really, really careful about. And the second part is actually uh, something that Ashwin also touched about. Um, that, uh, you know, uh, the gamers can be heterogeneous in terms of age uh, brackets, especially with regards to the age. I mean, some can be uh, quite young, some could be older as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So addressing to a very specific audience is what you're looking at. And that sharp targeting uh, could be one of the concerns as well, that are you doing that spillage as well to some people who might not be, uh, you know, you should not target your brands to a certain audience. Uh, that also is another concern. Uh, so first in the game piracy in the hacking part and secondly, um, you know, just a sharp targeting uh, that marketers in particular or media man managers look up to uh, whether that's happening uh, or not. So that's the other one. Great. Thanks. Uh, I think that makes sense, uh, especially targeting piece uh, really uh, does become a challenge if you are cutting across multiple segments and if you want sharp, sharp targeting, yes. Uh, Ritu, maybe you have some thoughts to add on this as well. Some of the concerns that you might have come across. Jayesh, if I have to pick one. And based on what Ashwin and Vineet said, I would bring it back to brand safety, Absolutely. both in terms of the context in which the ad is appearing and your brand is appearing, right. and also the audience to which you're speaking. So yes, there is a targeting challenge, but I'm extending that targeting challenge also in the, you know, in the realm of brand safety, because the right content to the right audience as a brand and in the right context is what you would ideally want. Absolutely. So all these three things have to fit together. So I would probably put brand safety as the biggest one. Biggest one. Great, thanks. Uh, that's that's wonderful. Um, uh, maybe uh, Nilesh, you have. Uh, this is a topic which I would like to hear from everybody on because uh, there could be concerns which we have not addressed. Uh, Nilesh, is there something which you have come across apart from brand safety, targeting, and probably the hacking piece? Yeah, th there are a couple, uh, right? So one is around uh, equation cost, right? Again, from a performance marketer point of view, um, and a programmatic uh, from a bottom of the funnel. Uh, uh, tend to be more expensive um, compared to the traditional mediums like Google and the Facebooks of the world. So, um, and, and only way 
for advertisers for now at least to justify this investment is to get an incremental growth and an incremental cost of acquisition lens. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, the number two is I think there are certain platforms uh, that specializes in gaming inventory purchases uh, has a certain limitations on on where you can land uh, the the kind of ad clicks to right. So for example, only Play Stores and and Therefore, certain advertisers want uh, slightly more exotic, uh, for example, app download through an APK. Those kind of uh, uh, support isn't available at the moment. Right? So th those are slightly more nuanced, but uh, uh, gaming yeah, from a performance standpoint still yet to realize its full potential uh, from a cost and as well as certain platform limitation point of view. Great. Thanks, Nilesh. Uh, I think we have run out of time. Uh, this, this panel will have to end prematurely. So let me put it this way. Let me try to summarize the discussion. It's, it's great to, uh, once again, have the experience. It was great to interact with all of you. Some great insights which have come up. Uh, the good things about gaming that I, I, I've uh, learned over here in this panel is basically the scale, the kind of engagement that can be done, the kind of differentiated things that we can do uh, on, on gaming as a platform. And the challenges obviously boils down to basically brand safety, uh, albeit in multiple, multiple realms of uh, content as well as context and as well as the cost somewhere where uh, what Nilesh was talking about. Um, I think, uh, thanks everyone. That was a great, a great uh, discussion. And uh, I myself am going back a richer man in terms of my understanding of gaming. Uh, uh, look forward to hearing. Uh, I would have taken some questions, but we have already overshot the time. Uh, so I leave it to the, if there are any questions, maybe you can reach out specifically to the organizers and the questions can be directed. Uh, In the paucity of time, we won't be taking questions, but thank you, Jayesh, for steering this really interesting conversation. And thank you to all our panelists for taking out the time and being here and sharing your insights here with us. Thank you so much once again. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Jayesh and Kathy. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Jayesh.